Nether portals are the best way to travel mid to long distances in your Minecraft world. And today I'll be showing you both how to make nether portals and how to properly link and use them in your Minecraft world. Let's dive in. So before we get into linking up nether portals, we first need to probably discuss how do you even make a nether portal in the first place? What are the rules around making nether portals? So first, let's focus on this, getting obsidian and breaking grass while in third person reverse mode. Yeah. Um, so let's focus on how to get obsidian. Now, sometimes you can get lucky and you can find pools of lava above ground, but it's pretty rare. And usually your best method is going to be to go underground. And if you go deep down underground, especially down here where the lava lakes usually form at Y level negative 54, um, you can find these huge lakes of lava. If you're lucky, you're going to find some lava that has already been covered over by water, because whenever water touches a lava source block like these, it turns it into obsidian like this. That obsidian can then be mined up with a diamond pickaxe. And it, yes, it does have to be a diamond or higher pickaxe. You cannot mine obsidian with other types of uh, pickaxes, um, except for the netherite. And once you get down here, I recommend put down a little water bucket right there, just like that. And you can just kind of mine yourself in a straight line. The water will push you and you can pick up your obsidian. And then what will happen is when you get far enough, that water, it'll fill in and it will make sure that you don't get caught on fire by the lava. And it'll also make sure that if there's lava below where you're mining, that you won't like fall into it and die via that method either. And once you get yourself at least 10 obsidian, that's how much you need, you can then build another portal. Now, when you're building another portal, there's going to be a couple basic rules that you need to know to make sure it's your portal lights. First of all, the minimum size, the smallest you can make another portal is going to be two blocks. Um, you can then put any block in the corner. So I'm just gonna throw a block of grass right there. Go up three blocks, corner, go over two more blocks, and then corner, and then up three blocks. This only uses 10 pieces of obsidian. The corner pieces do not need to be obsidian. And if you like this, it becomes another portal. That's the smallest portal you can make, two by three. The largest portal you can make though, is 23 by 23. So this one right here is 23 blocks wide, 23 blocks tall, works perfectly. And you could do pretty much any size in between. Only rule is it has to be a square or rectangular shape. So this guy right here, three by three, looks a lot better than your two by three over there. Super easy, just walk right in that, right? This one right here, super tall, super skinny. Maybe you could decorate it to look like a cool sword. I've seen people do that. They look really awesome. That works. But this one right here, it's a circle. So while it is technically big enough, nothing. We got nothing. It doesn't work. Now, when you make another portal and you go through it, it's going to take you to the nether. One of the things you have to be really aware of and careful of is the nether. It could be a dangerous place when you go in. It's good to go in without any valuables your first time because you have no control over where this portal will take you to. So we can stay in here a few seconds and then I recommend that once you pop through, hold down the crouch button just in case you end up on a ledge somewhere where you could fall off and die. You see that we have brought ourselves into a warped biome where we can get warped wood and other goodies. Now, first things first, like I said, you have no control over where this portal takes you in the nether, but the nether and the overworld, they are linked together. In the nether, for every one block that you travel, it's like traveling eight blocks in the overworld. So if I needed to move, say, 800 blocks in that direction, that's the same as only moving 100 blocks in the nether. And I have a really easy way to demonstrate this for you. I'm going to go ahead. I'm going to place down a cartography table real quick. I'm going to open up this locator map, which is going to show me the area around me. I'm going to click on this. I'm going to throw the locator map in there. I'm going to throw some paper in there. I'm going to upgrade it to level one, two, three and level four. And that's going to give me this really big area on screen here. Now, maps are a really good way to explore your world. In this case, I wanted to kind of show you if I'm flying at a really fast speed here in the air in creative mode. Look at how fast my little character there on the map is moving. It's taking a while to get all the way down here to this end of the map. Three hours later. Okay, and after a long period of time, we've made ourselves all the way to the other end of the map. Let me go ahead and take myself back. I think it's right over here. Here it is, this is the one we went into. And let's go through. Now this map, it does work. Oh, hello. 
Um, it does work in the nether. As you can see, it is in my hand there. So let's just say we're going to move this direction right here. The same direction we moved before. Okay, here we go. I kind of found like a wide open area. Now watch what happens when I move in this direction. Look how fast my character on the map is moving now. It is moving exactly eight times faster because for every one block I travel here in the nether, is eight blocks in the overworld. So moving from one area to the other is really easy. So let's say I wanna to get to this side of the map in the overworld eight times faster than what it currently takes because that took a long time earlier. That's where linking up your nether portals is going to come in handy. Let's work on the first portal that we set up in terms of getting it linked. Okay, so remember eight to one, we can actually use math to find out this exact spot in the nether because that's where we want this portal to go that's going to be important because if we want these two portals to link up properly and not have other portals interfere with them they need to be in the right spot so if i get on top of this when i purposely put it here we are standing on position level look in the top left hand corner your first number is your x coordinate that one is 80. your second one is your y coordinate that's 71. your third one is your z coordinate that is 10. so if we divide 80 by 8, we're going to get 8. So the x coordinate in the nether needs to be 8. Math is hard. 80 divided by 8, definitely not 8. It is definitely 10. 10 is the right answer here. I'm going to end up saying this wrong about 20 more times in the video. The y coordinate doesn't matter, at least not for this part of what we're talking about. We'll talk about the y coordinate in a little bit. The z coordinate is 10. If we divide 10 by 8, we get like, what, 1.2 or 1.1 something. We can round that down to 1. So eight and one is where our portal needs to be in the nether. So I come over here to the nether. This portal is not gonna do me any good. We're gonna get rid of that in a second. We need to go to the coordinates eight and one. In this case, eight and one is gonna be in the wall. That's fine, we'll dig ourselves into the wall. Eight and one. So we wanna put our portal right here. Let's mark that. Let's dig out kind of around all this. And we'll just put it in the ground like this. And we can light it. And now, eight and one is linked up with this and for our purposes here i want to go ahead i want to just destroy these i don't i don't want these portals interfering with what we're doing so let's say i want to do short form travel i want to be able to walk through this and get to somewhere where i can see maybe i don't want to have to cross this water every single time so i'm going to fly over here and i'm going to put another portal over here on this area Another portal in. What happens when I go through? And as you see, this took us to our portal right here. The portal that we already had. So if I go back through this, it's going to take me to my original spot. So that being the case, you may wonder, how do I then get over there? So we're going to go over. We're going to do our coordinates again. It's going to require a little bit more math this time. So we can see we're at X position 318. You could be just anywhere like on where the portal is is fine or stand. If you stand inside of it, it's going to suck you through. So getting on top of it or whatever would, would work. 318, I'll pull up my calculator, 318 divided by 8, 39.75. You could round it down or up. That's not going to matter if it's within one. Um, we're going to round it up to 40 and then we can see we are on uh, number five for the Z coordinate. So if we divide five by eight, you're going to get something less than one. We're just going to call it one. So 40 and one is where we need to be. So let's go through and let's find 40 and one. And here we go. 40 and one right here. So we have a portal there, portal here. If I go through this one at 40 and one, I'm going to come out at the Sandy Beach area. If I want to get all the way over there to my portal that's there, I can just simply go through here, run down this hall, go through here, and just like that, I've got my way over here. I've now linked two areas that are nice and close to each other, but it saves me time because I can just pop in and out of the portals. If you have places in your base that are far enough away that you don't want to walk to, you don't want to waste a light or flying, make yourself two nether portals and link them together. But that's not really the big benefit. The big benefit is for long range travel, right? So remember this area all the way down there? It was a really long ways away. 
about 2,000 blocks or close to it. If you're enjoying today's video, help it get discovered by more people by clicking the like button and leaving a comment. Also, if you enjoy my videos, click the subscribe button, join my Discord channel, and become a channel member by clicking the join button. Members get awesome perks, including access to my members only Minecraft servers. Now, back to the video. So here we are, about 2,000 blocks away from what would be our main base area, and I want to be able to very easily get back and forth between the two. Let's find an interesting point here that we would maybe call a second base or some form of like point of interest that we would want to travel back and forth between. So here's an interesting area that I might want to make another base. I have ice here so I can get ice for maybe projects that I might have. There's a little mushroom biome there that I don't have to worry about mobs spawning at. And there's even a guardian temple right here, which I can never remember the proper name to. So we're just going to call it guardian temple ocean monument got it this looks like an area that we may want to come over and visit frequently right so what we're going to do here is we're just going to plop down another portal let's plop it down right here fire this up and odds are this is going to take us to a brand new area in the nether that we have not explored yet yes there we go so we're in this somewhat new area in the nether right so we actually want to link up this portal here first so let's look at our coordinates where this one is in the overworld. We're at negative 1,048. Let's do 1,048 divided by 8. 131, we're going to add the negative back to that. So negative 131. And then 2572. 321.5. So we'll just call it 321. So our two numbers were 131 and 321. Now in this case, I don't think I want the portal up here because traveling well first of all i don't i don't even know where i am i'm like tucked in some type of hole somewhere so getting my way back to our original portal location it's actually not going to be very easy so we know we need to get to 131 and 321 but we also know that traveling above ground in the nether is not very easy so the next tip i have for you when it comes to nether travel and linking up your portals is do it somewhere safer Regular ground level, not safe at all. But if you go down below ground, below the normal lava level, right around down to that Y position being at about 11, you might have yourself a pretty good spot. So that will require that we get rid of our top side portals. So we know this one is on uh, eight and one, right? Yeah, eight and one. So what if, what if we dig down? We get ourselves all the way down to Y level 11 where it's safe to travel as long as we dig ourselves some tunnels. And we put ourselves on eight and one, and we put our portal here instead. Now, if we put ourselves back in here and we go in, it's actually gonna take us to the portal up top because the portal up top is at a similar Y level. So this is where Y level matters. If you have two portals in the same position over top of each other, since our Y level here is 72 and our Y level here is 67, they're the closest together, so it's going to link these two. But in this case, I can simply fix that by just getting rid of this portal right here. Now, with that one gone, I can go through here. It takes me to my spot here. I can go through here. It takes me to this. Now that I've unlinked my portals and put them in different Y levels and different XZ levels, we're having some complications. Sometimes when you try to relink nether portals down in their proper location and you have other portals around that were not properly linked you have to go through and break all the other portals around that's kind of what's happening here so doing things like breaking these portals that were put in the wrong area and going back to the original portal that we're trying to link up like this one right here that we're trying to properly relink up what we want to do after we break the other portals that were not linked properly and are in the area go ahead and break this one and then just relight it and it should link up properly let's go through let's get rid of this other top side portal Let's go back down to this one. Let's break it. Let's relight it. Let's go through it. And let's go back through. As you can see, we're where we're supposed to be. Now, remember that negative 131, 321 number that was the really far away area that we calculated earlier. Now that we're all the way down to Y level 11, we have a safe place to travel to that. So we're going to look at the X level and the Z level on our screen here. And we can see that moving in this direction makes that seven go down to a six, which means if we keep going in this direction, that number is going to keep going down until it gets into the negatives. And we need to get that negative all the way down to negative 131. Oh, and along the way, you'll probably find ancient debris. Pick it up. You're welcome. Now, once you're at that negative 131, we need to figure out what direction is going to take us to 321. So I can break these blocks right here. Step this way. My number goes down not the right way that this way our number goes up 
So now we need to get this way to go up to number 321 on that Z coordinate. Okay, we're here, negative 131, 321. Now you may remember, we did go through a portal earlier and that portal should be somewhere up around here. We don't want that here. That's gonna mess everything up. That portal, it's gotta go. So here we are, negative 131, 321. We're just gonna carve ourselves out a little space right here, should be fine. Uh, we're gonna put down our obsidian and then light our portal. We should end up exactly where we intend to in that ice biome. Boom, here we are in the ice biome. So we just moved three and a half thousand blocks that on this end of things is eight times less than that, about 400 blocks. Now we can easily travel, right? I can easily, in this case, I can kind of fly kind of quick because I'm in creative mode. You would, you would be potentially running this, right? Just like this. And eventually, about a minute or so later, you make yourself all the way back to your main base. But you can actually travel this even faster. So we've linked up portals properly and we've linked up two areas that are over 3,500 blocks away. How the heck do we make it faster? Well, what we're gonna do is we're gonna make this lane right here two blocks wide. All that ice that we just found, now we can use that because this ice can make nether travel a lot faster. And now what do you do? You take a boat, you place it down and you go. And it's that fast. So when it comes to nether travel, linking up portals, making your world work more for you rather than you having to work more in your world, nether travel is the way to do it. Ice boat roads for long distances is the way to do it. Decorate the tunnels if you like to. A lot of people do it. It's really cool. It's really nice. It's really fun. Make another hub with nether portals at all of these different places in your base that you don't want to have to travel to because it's too far to travel and you could just use the nether, take a few steps, and you've made it hundreds of blocks away in a matter of seconds. Hope today's video about nether portals helped everybody out. And if it did, please consider leaving a like in the video and a comment down below as they help out a ton. Also, subscribe to the channel for more great tutorials. Thank you so much, and I'll see you in the next one.